group six and we're doing the likelihood ratio test. So for the likelihood ratio test, instead of asking, does the data have distribution A? We ask, is the data more likely to have distribution B than A? So in other words, our null hypothesis, H naught, is the data has distribution A, and our alternative, H sub one, is the data has distribution B. To actually perform a formal hypothesis test under the likelihood ratio test, distribution A must be a special case of distribution B. So maybe distribution A is, um, has a specific mean, and then B is all the other values that are not whatever that value for A was, or say A was a gamma distribution and B was an exponential. So how to conduct the likelihood ratio test? We let the likelihood function be denoted as L of theta, and theta naught, or sub zero, will be the value of the parameter that maximizes the likelihood function, which we learned from our maximum likelihood test, uh, within the limits of the null hypothesis. And then theta sub one will be the value of the parameter which maximizes the likelihood function for all possible values from the alternative hypothesis. And so the test statistics, T, is defined as two natural log of the value L of theta sub one divided by L of theta sub zero, which rewritten by law of natural logs is two times the uh, value of natural log of the likelihood of theta sub one minus natural log of the likelihood theta sub zero. So the rejection criteria is when, oh, here we go. The rejection type criteria is when your test statistic T is greater than value C, and C is calculated from this equation right here. Alpha here is given to you, so it'll be say 5% or 10% typically, and then C you will get from your chi-square distribution tables where your number of degrees of freedom is equal to the number of free, oops, number of free parameters in the model from the alternative hypothesis minus the number of free parameters in the model from the null hypothesis. Now the reason that the likelihood ratio test is used instead of say the KS, Anderson, Darling, and Lois chi-square statistic test is because this actually takes into consideration the complexity of the model. So the more complex the model, then like if you have additional parameters in the same distribution, then obviously it's going to yield a value as accurate if not more so than the same distribution but with one less additional parameter. But complexity is not necessarily always better. And so this basically takes into account, there's a cost to adding additional parameters. And the example given here is the exponential versus the gamma. And that is it. Everyone, we're doing problem 37.13 from the study manual for C4 exam. So here's the problem. You basically fit a wide distribution to a sample of 20 claims amounts, and you test the H naught, which is tau of two against H alternative, which is tau does not equal to two. And you're giving three uh, pieces of information here. And then um, uh, the problem wants you to find the result of the test. So first, the goal of the problem is to use the likelihood ratio test to determine whether a tau equals to two or not. Um, first, is you want to determine the optimal uh, result uh, value for theta for the level distribution for tau equals two using this formula, which is theta equals the square root of all the, uh, the sum of the square theta points over n. And this will give you uh, 66.0553, and you already given the, uh, the, uh, the squared, sum of the squared theta points, which is 87,266 over the total amount of value, which is 20, total amount of data points, which is 20. Next, we're, now we're looking for the density function and the log likelihood functions. And from your C4 tables, you will get your level distribution density. Which is shown here. And you can simplify it like this. Then you can apply, then you can solve the likelihood function with respect to the data, which is essentially all the density functions for data points. Multiply together and find the natural log of that, which will give you 
the following formula. Then you can calculate the log likelihood function using the given of tau equals two and what you saw earlier for theta, which is 66.0553. And you will get negative 100.139. Then also note that in the formula, we have the sum of xi to the tau over theta to the tau, which is very similar to what you saw earlier for to optimize the theta value, which, you, which can really simplify your steps. Now you can solve for the test statistic, which is t equals two times natural log of L1 minus natural log of L0. Note that, Know that L1 is the maximum mean likelihood estimator, while L0 is the likelihood function, which will give you t equals 2 times negative 98.443, which you already gotten from the problem as one piece of, one of the pieces of information you're given, which is negative 98.443, minus negative 100.139, which is what you calculated, which you will then get the test statistic of 3.392. And finally, we can determine the degrees of freedom, which is the difference between the number of free parameters uh, in the model from alternative hypothesis and the number of free parameters in the model from null hypo hypothesis, which you already heard from the notes. And since null hypothesis only constrains one single variable, while the alternative constrains two, the degrees of freedom will be one. And then you can apply uh, the chi-square test chart from, from your tables using one degrees of freedom. So you can see from the chart with one degrees of freedom um, and our value, our test, test statistic is, uh, is 3.392, it will be between 2.706 and 3.841 or 90% and 95%. Finally, we can look at our answer choices to determine, to determine the final, final value. Since it's between uh, 90 and 95.05 point, point, uh, and 0.1, we can pretty much eliminate A through D and the final choice is E. Yeah. Okay, I'm doing aspect problem number 22, and you fit a Pareto distribution to a sample of 200 claim amounts and use a likelihood ratio test to test the hypothesis that alpha equals 1.5 and theta equals 7.8. You're given that the maximum likelihood estimates are alpha hat equals 1.4 and theta hat equals 7.6. The natural logarithm of the likelihood function evaluated the maximum likelihood estimates is negative 817. 0.92 and the sum of the natural log of x sub i plus 7.8 is 607.64 and you want to determine the result of the test. So we get our likelihood function is the product of j equals 1 to 200 of alpha time, or alpha times theta to the alpha over x of j plus theta to the alpha plus 1 where this is just the density function of a 2 Pareto distribution. Then we take the natural log of that to get the log likelihood function, which is 200 natural log of alpha plus 200 alpha times natural log of theta minus alpha plus one times the sum of natural log of x sub i plus theta. And then we want to plug in our hypothesized values of alpha equals 1.5, and theta equals 7.8. And this 607.64 comes from what we were given up here. And we evaluate that to be negative 821.77. And next, we want to find the test, test statistic, which is 2 times natural log of L theta 1 minus natural log of L theta naught. 
where theta one is the maximum likelihood estimate where values vary over all possible values from the alternative hypothesis, and theta naught is the value of the parameters that maximize the MLE function, and only values of parameters within the null hypothesis may be considered for theta naught. So then we get t equals two times a21 minus or a21.77 minus a17.92, and the a17.92 came from another thing we were given. So t equals 7.7. .7. Now we want to use or now we need to find the, the degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom for a likelihood ratio test is the number of free parameters in the alternative hypothesis minus the number of free parameters in the null hypothesis. So for this problem, it's just two minus zero or two. And now we need to use the chi-squared table to find where our test statistic lies. So at two degrees of freedom, our test statistic of 7.7 .7 is right here. So that is in between the 97.5th and the 99th percentiles. So we want to reject at the 0.025 significance level, but not at the 0.01 significance level, which is answer choice C. C from the ASM study again. We're given a sample of five observations um, with five values, 0 0.5, 5, 10, 20, and 30. And um, we're given a sum of their natural law. We're considering two models for their underlying distribution, the exponential and the y hole. We're also given the log likelihood function, the optimal value of the parameters. We're looking for the log likelihood ratio statistic and the significance level at which the first model is set. So first, um, we have we have realized that um, the optimal value we're given is uh, the condition where we have both theta and uh, tau for our liable distribution, whereas the null hypothesis is going to be um, what we're looking for, the, the maximum likelihood of the exponential. Because the exponential is a special case of the y ball, it has less free parameters than the y ball distribution. So model one would constrain the theta parameter, while model two would constrain both the parameters. So our optimal value is for the y ball fit. Now to calculate the maximum likelihood of the exponential distribution, we set theta um, had equal to x bar, which is 13.1 for our sample sample mean. Using the density function from the C4 tables, we calculate the log likelihood uh, function, and then we substitute x bar for theta hat and calculate our uh, theta one value. Then we can calculate the log likelihood statistic from two times natural log of alpha of na natural log of theta hat theta one minus theta zero. There's a small mistake in the study manual where um, the value is incorrect. These two should be these two should be switched, and because um, we're given the theta one value, we're given the theta zero value, and we calculate theta one value. So these two should be flipped around. Um, regardless, our answer is 0 0.0012. Um, you can see from the C4 table that um, this value is basically uh, accepted at any degrees of freedom. So this is less than the smallest value in our table at 0.363. 